Hello, this is Black Country Blokes Tune the Fat. Listen, listen, listen. I've been hearing a lot lately about men don't talk. But in my experience, men do talk, just people aren't listening. So it's going to be me and a group of blokes discussing our struggles and victories through life. Warning, there may be some bad language, so apologies to all the moms, especially on my own. Let's get going. Listen, listen, listen. Abin, yeah, this is the Black Country Blokes Tune of Fat with me, Kev Dillon, Lee Cadman, and our guest today is Bally Blaines, and she's coming on to talk on behalf of Papyrus. Now, many of us have heard of the Samaritans. We had Chris from the Samaritans come on the other week, telling us about all the wonderful things they do. But not many people know about Papyrus. Now, this is mainly for young people, a, a suicide hotline for young people. And I'll get Bally to explain what it is in a bit. We've recorded this on Tuesday, the Tuesday before we're going to lockdown. And as you know, it's being released tonight. Because I don't want people feeling alone in these times. And Bally's going to be telling us all the things that she's going to be doing. Because no matter how low you're feeling now, the world is not a better place when you're not in it. Your life is worth saving. So this is why we want these organisations to come on and tell us all of the good things that they're doing. And hopefully that'll be a lifeline of love that can help you out in this difficult time. So, Bally, thank you ever so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a bit more about Papyrus. So um, my name is Bally Baines. I'm a community suicide prevention advisor for Papyrus. Papyrus is the only UK national charity that's dedicated to the prevention of young suicides. So we support any young person up to the age of 35 who is struggling with suicidal thoughts through our helpline called Hopeline UK. And we have trained advisors that will speak to those people that are struggling with suicidal thoughts. Um, and you guys are sharing the number at the bottom for me, so that's great. We also have a text message service because we know that not many young people feel comfortable speaking on the phone. So we also have a text message service as well and an email um, an email address as well that you can um, access as well. Now that's not only there for anyone that's struggling with suicidal thoughts, it's also there for any concerned other. So if you're concerned about a young person and don't know how to have that conversation around suicide and just want some advice, you can call us for just some advice. Our trained advisors will take that call too. Um, we do get loads of parents that call us that are concerned about a young person too. So it's not just there for those that are struggling with suicidal thoughts, it's also there for those that are concerned about a young person also too. And it's also there to debrief, not many people know about that, so if you've had a difficult conversation with somebody around suicide and it's left you quite emotional and you don't know what to do, you can also call us just to debrief, debrief and speak to one of our advisors. What age do they, can they start at? Um, well, what's the youngest yes. that they you deal with? So, so there's no minimum age for you guys to call, um, but the, it is a young person charity up to the age of 35. So um, it's for anyone up to the age of 35 who's struggling with suicidal thoughts. But if you're over 35, you can still call us and then we will give you, um, we'll signpost you to more sort of relevant services. So um, our advisors have a whole lot of different organisations that can support as well. So then we'll signpost you to more relevant services. But this is specifically for young people up to the age of 35. And have you seen a big, um, through the lockdown, have you been extra busy? Yeah, so uh, we've had quite a few um, increased number of calls since lockdown. Um, and we tend to have different sort of themes. And prior to lockdown, we tend to get a lot of young people that were calling us who had sort of issues around bullying at school. But lately, we are seeing a lot around sort of COVID-19, isolation, loneliness, um, in terms of sort of relationships as well. So there's been an increase in those sort of calls that we're getting and those sort of themes that young people are telling us when they're calling us, um, especially around sort of um, the whole COVID-19. It's affecting everybody, isn't it, at the moment and stuff. So a lot of young people are calling us and are concerned around that as well. Definitely. I just say, like, from Thursday or the day that this is coming out, all gyms and youth clubs and swimming baths, where... Young people go, I mean, they, you go to the pub or you go to a, a place of um, a gym where you're making yourself feel better and you have your, your friends and families to so many people. And I think when they're taken away from you, it can be a very lonely place. It's, and it can be lonely when you live with mom and dad because you love your mom and dad, but bloody hell, don't they do your head in? <laughs> and then 
So you've got these people who love you and you love them, but you're under each other's feet. And then it must be so tough to be in there with them. Definitely. I mean, I've just been speaking to my friends and family and I've just seen how it's affecting them. And I've got um, a young family member that's just started university and she was saying that she's gone into the halls and she's been on her own. Um, you know, she was expecting to sort of make those relationships and friendships and stuff. But because of COVID-19, a lot of people are self-isolating. So um, they've just literally, she's just been in the halls on her own and she's saying it's really affecting her mentally um, in terms of not being able to socialise or talk to anybody. So it is having a huge impact on our sort of mental health and wellbeing as well. Um, I was just looking at the ONS website and it said that since COVID-19 um, there's been an increase. So in terms of mental health, it's, it was 1 in 10 in adults, it's now 1 in 5. So we are seeing that increase and it is definitely affecting people's mental health and well-being. Because everyone's blaming the students at the moment, but if you have 18, 21 year olds, first time away from mum and dad, a lot of them are going to play up. And the thing is they're having all this blame, but they've they've paid thousands upon thousands of parents to get away. Now they're not allowed to come home and see mum and dad. They, they have to sit in a room with complete and utter strangers. Definitely. I mean, we've done loads of, we've on our website, our website's brilliant for sort of resources and stuff. And we've done um, Who We Are video. We've sent that out to a lot of the colleges and universities just to share that with their students, to let them know that we are here. And if they are feeling lonely and they are struggling, that they can get in touch with us as well. So um, we've got we've got parents leaflet as well, which is available on our website. So if parents are listening to us today and they are struggling as well, um, just having those conversations with the young people, then they can access that as well. Because one thing that I really found interesting when I was talking to Chris from uh, Samaritans, he goes, it's only about, and I don't want to misquote this, but it's only about like 20% of his phone calls are suicide. The rest are people who just need a pep talk. That that person you've never met in your life, you can't judge you, and you just open your soul to them. And that's what I think, like, these phone calls, uh, these organisations like yourself and the Samaritans are brilliant just to open up your heart and not be judged. Definitely. We know that a lot of people, when they are struggling with suicidal thoughts, they don't want their life to end. They just want whatever's, go whatever's going on in their life um, to just sort of disappear that pain and stuff. So we know once we speak to them and we give them those coping mechanisms, we know that it's not actually suicide. It's other things that, are cons that they have that are affecting them as well. So it's nice just to talk to somebody, definitely. Is there anything that you'd like to say? Yeah, I think it's um, thank you for the work you do um, and and it's it's a weird one is it? it's kind of like it, it, it'd be better off if we didn't have you in the sense that no no one uh no one would be calling about suicide and we'd we'd fixed it but it's a problem that's that's kind of not going to go away and it's going to get worse with, with what's going on in the world at the moment um on that note do, um what do you do to keep yourself sane as such i think self-care is really really important and you know um we kind of go out on training and we talk a lot about self-care and how important it is. And I often kind of thought to myself, well, actually, at times I've really neglected myself in that sense. I'm a mum of two kids. I'm constantly working. Um, and then it doesn't stop as soon as you get home. You know, you've got to sort of look after your children and stuff. But I found there was a point in my life where I just couldn't cope with it, a lot of it, like a lot of stuff going on in my life. And um, this was before I started working with Papyrus. And I had the kids and... I, you know, sleepless nights, it was just everything. But then I knew that in terms of me to be a good mom and do all the other stuff in life, I needed to make that time for myself. So for me, it's just going out for like a five minute walk, that fresh air, just so much, you know, it just makes me change in the sense of my mood and the way I am. But I remember going through a point in my life where I just felt really, really low and I just could not shift it. And I worked with domestic violence for about 13 years and I always, I always was the one that supported those people through those journeys until I actually found myself I'm actually the one that now needs the support and the help and at that point it was really difficult to reach out and get the support because I think I felt a little bit of a sh that shame um I felt ashamed getting the support because I didn't want people to think I was weak so Sorry, something just happened to my phone then. Um, I didn't want people to think I was weak and I was struggling, um, especially when people around me were like, well, we've had kids, you know, it's 
it's just one of those things, you know, this young generation don't know how to sort of deal with things. There's so much going on in people's lives. And, you know, you guys just think it's having kids is really, really difficult. But it was, it was a struggle. Um, but I know the importance of taking that bit of time out for yourself and how important it is. And so now I make sure that on a daily basis that I do take five, ten minutes out to myself, for myself. And I feel like it really, really helps me. And it just makes me clear my, it gives me that opportunity to just clear my mind and stuff. I don't have time, a lot of time to do like half an hour, 45 minutes to myself. Even those five, ten minutes is really, really worth it for me. Um, so if anyone's listening to me today, I just want to say self-care is really, really important. And it doesn't have to be really, really big things that we do. It could be something really, really small. Like just going for a walk for five minutes or just changing, you know, just changing the scenery, just going into a different room. Um, so small little things that can make such a huge difference. Well, it's like um, when you go on an aeroplane, you have to put your mask on before you can help someone else. That's it, definitely. And we do. I mean, we tend to really neglect ourselves at times, I think. And it's almost like, oh, I'll do that then, I'll do that then. Um, I mean, I've been wanting to join the gym for it's such a long time and I still haven't managed to do it. And now it's like lockdown. And I was saying to my husband, I was going to join the gym. And he's like, well, it's never going to happen, Pally. You weren't really going to do it. But um, it's that you put things off, don't you, all the time? And I think it's just making that time for yourself to make sure that you actually, you know, say, well, actually, today I'm going to do this and I'm going to stick to it because everything else will just come and go. But our, is our it funny? Is really, really important. Isn't it funny how... Uh, You'll never forget to help someone out if oh, I must find Lee back or I must go and lend him that five pound. But we'll often forget to look after ourselves. And that's the ironic thing about when you're a caring, giving, giving person. We never forget anyone else's problems, but we often put our own problems on the back shelf. Definitely. I, I completely agree, Kevin. I think that's it. But it is really important that we, we do look after ourselves because then we're not going to be no good to anybody else, are we? If we don't, we need to invest in ourselves. Um, definitely. I think it's really, really important. I, I heard a saying the other day, you can't drink from an empty cup. <laughs> so true. Yeah. And is that how you got into this line of work, just being a caring soul? Um, yeah, so I mean, prior to joining Papyrus, I worked in a charity setting for over 13 years. Um, I, I supported women and children who fled domestic violence, and then a lot of that was sort of community work. I mean, I've got a degree in criminology and psychology, but I never really sort of went into that. Um, but often, when I was working with women and children, we'd often get calls, and there's a part of me that felt... There wasn't many support, there wasn't many services out there for men, especially DV um, services. So often we'd get calls for men seeking help, but there was nothing there for them. And, um, you know, I always said to myself that if I had a lot of money, I'd always open a refuge for men um, who were fleeing domestic violence because we know at that time there was one in 10 um, that were struggling and needed sort of refuge space and there was nothing available to them. But the reason why I got into work with Papyrus was um, I lost my uncle to suicide about 10, 10 years ago. And it was just a complete shock to all our family when my uncle took his own life and he was in his 60s. And although I worked um, with people who had struggled with suicidal thoughts for many years and I supported them, it was, it was different when it was someone really close to me and the shock on our family that like, we just did not expect it it's almost something that you never think is going to happen to you and when it and then when it does that's when you think oh my gosh um but prior to my uncle taking his own life i actually saw him at a family wedding four weeks before he took his own life and um working mental health i kind of knew that there wasn't something right about him but to everybody else in my family everyone was just like it just seems quite normal because there was quite a lot of alcohol around and, you know, it was like, I just probably had one too many. But I remember saying to my sister, I don't feel, something doesn't feel right to me and I just don't feel like he is right. Um, my, I remember my last conversation I had with him was going into the marquee and asking him if he was okay. And he, he was a man of every few words, so he didn't really speak much. And a few weeks later, he took his own life and when he took his own life i think it really shocked me the fact that how much sort of stigma and taboo was around that subject we didn't want to openly talk about it and it wasn't something that everyone was trying to 
sort of keep it really quiet to not mention how he took his own life because of that stigma and that taboo around it. Um, but he was actually my dad's um, brother. My my dad is very much sort of open and an open man and will talk about his problems and the way he is and stuff. And that's just the way he's always been. So we oft, we do talk about it now, but I know that like sort of my wider family, it's something that's still not openly spoken about because it's it's almost classed as that stigma around it and people don't want to talk about it. I've been working with Papyrus for now just under two years and I know that working with Papyrus, suicide is the largest killer of young people and I'm a mum of two kids. Losing my uncle, I know how it's affected our family and you're never going to be the same again. As a, We're never going to be the same as a family and I know how it's affected my dad. Um, so I want... I joined. Work, I wanted to work with Pirates because I wanted to make a difference, and part of that was making our community suicide safer. Um, and we're only going to do that if we break that taboo and that stigma that's attached to suicide by talking about it and reaching out to people that need the support that they need. Because I know still people don't feel comfortable in reaching out and getting the support that they need, and I know there's people out there that might be concerned about somebody as well that don't feel like. They can reach out or they don't know where to go to get the support so i wake up every morning and you know I, I do this for my uncle but i also do it to prevent suicide i'm a mom of two young kids and i don't want anyone to lose anyone to suicide and i think it leaves profound effects on those that it leaves behind there was some research that's really and, yeah. sorry Ali, but i think that's so important no. what you're saying and, and making sure that we teach um, young young children from a very early uh, early age to be able to talk because me me and Kev have spoke about this before that it, it wasn't until we were in our thirties that we realised we could talk to each other and still today with myself I still find it very hard to speak with my wife about my mental health um, so we, I think we we have to get over the stigma and get more mental health support within schools. To, so, so when they're growing up in later life, they realise there is there is there is ways you can do things, and and there is lessons that to be learned, and you can you can move forward with a better mental health. Definitely, de definitely. Um, even with like papyrus now, we are we know that suicide is the largest killer of young people. Unfortunately, a lot of young people take their lives, and not many people know about that. Especially when we go out and we deliver training, you know, people are shocked that when we say that actually suicide is the largest killer of young people, a lot of young people are taking their own lives. Um, and it's it's shocking, it's shocking, but we know that suicide can be preventable if people reach out and get the support that they need. So, you know, if someone's listening to me today, I just want you to, I just want to let you know that you're not on your own. You do not need to struggle on that, with those thoughts on your own. There is support out there. Please reach out and get the support that you need. Could I just say a few things? Ali. Um, first of all, we've got your post downstairs um, by Julie's desk uh, with the hotlines on there. And I, I recommend that all clubs, any sporting facility should be having these. Because as you said, um, there's such a, a thing with young people taking their lives. But something about your uncle, because when I did my mental health first aid course with um, Ian Hines at Mental, mental Health, health Services, CIC. CIC, well done. Um, it surprised me about how many young people are doing it but how many older people as in your uncle's age in the 60s but then there's almost a taboo like if a young person if anyone takes a life it is a tragedy but when it's an older person people almost go like oh well he had a good innings anyway he had 70 years and he's and you think well for him to have to do that apart from with euthanasia but to be that depressed no it's not okay it's still heartbreaking because it's the people who are left behind and you and it, uh, it's that sense of guilt, like when you spot something, you're thinking, could I have done more? Even though there wasn't anything you could do more, it leaves that guilt on us, doesn't it? It's also, Kev, that, that to me, you, I'd be thinking about the struggle he had to go through to get to that point. Mm. Knowing knowing how, how, you know, you've got to have struggled. You haven't had a good innings if you've committed suicide or you haven't thought you had because you've been struggling that much. Mm. You know, it's Definitely. that worries me. Um, yeah, well, I mean, when my uncle took his own life, we did hear comments like that. Oh, why would he want to take his own life now? You know, he's a granddad and, 
you know, people were making all sorts of comments like, well, he, has, he didn't have much life left in him anyway, so, you know, he should have just waited. But obviously, whatever he was going through at that time was quite difficult for him. And, you know, I'm not ashamed that he's taken his own life, but I'm ashamed that he didn't feel like he could access the support or speak to us as a family and reach out to us. So, and within that, there is that guilt. Um, and I know for me, working mental health, um, I knew that something wasn't right with him. So, you know, a lot of people, especially my family, were saying that there wasn't any signs that, you know, we didn't know, we didn't see it coming. But it's difficult when you've lost someone to suicide to say, well, actually, there might have been some signs. And clearly with my uncle, there were. And I think it's having these hotlines and having, like, I, my dream is to have uh, a mental health first aid within every sports club, especially with boxing. I like boxing to lead the way. So if we, have, we all have to have phys, uh, first aid. So if I cut my hand, everyone can see I'm bleeding. But if we've got five mental health first aiders and go, I haven't seen it, Lee hasn't seen it, but, oh, Bally's picked it up. We've saved that person's life. And I think with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, we need more people who are willing to ask that question. And also, we need to accept the courage. And it takes courage to accept the help. It's not a weakness because we all struggle, me more than bloody most. But we need to accept that courage to say, you know what? Yes, I am feeling poorly. Yes, I'm feeling uh, suicidal or depressed or anxious. And it's having that courage then to accept the help to hopefully get better. Definitely. I mean, especially with men, like you were talking about men, and we know that they are three times more likely to take their own life. Um, and we know that often we, we kind of hear the phrase that men don't like to talk, but often they do and not many people want to listen. You know, it's not, they are talking, they are telling you how they're feeling and stuff. And often sometimes it's, they feel like they don't get the right support that they need. But I know within the organisation, not worked with before there weren't many support services out then over the years it's been nice to see that there are special services for men i know when i started working in the charity sector about 15 years ago there weren't many support services for men now you have helplines specifically for men to reach out and get support as well so it's nice to know that we're recognizing that and there is more support services out there specifically for men Ali, as well once we finish this if you could get us some of those hotlines for the men that'd be wonderful and we yeah. can put those in our show notes as well yeah. Because like yeah, our, our right. they say that men don't talk, but men do talk. But often we don't feel like we've been listened to. And if if, if you yeah. keep banging your hand on saying "Help me, help me," if no one answers, eventually you stop knocking. And I think that's why with men, there's such a drink and drug problem because we're going to have eight points or a bag of this, a bag of that, so we can talk. And then you go, "Oh, Kev, you're a bit bit strange last night." But all he's trying to do is talk because when he's sober. It's so difficult to talk in case he thinks that he's going to be teased and bullied. So, but guys, we haven't got to just rely on the booze and the drugs. Let's try and reach down in us and send an email or a text message or a phone call. And let's try and get the help properly. Yes, no, definitely. I'll share a few of those um, help points with you at the end. That would be great if you could just send, share them with your listeners. And with, with the children of today and the, the young people, what, what as you said before, it was the bullying, which I think is absolutely atrocious, you know, with cyberbullying, bullying at school. What, and then we've got the COVID thing. What, what other things, do, you know, if, if uh, you're a concerned parent or a big brother or a big sister or nanny and granddad, what kind of things should we be watching out for? Okay, so if you see any changes, I mean, obviously, when you're a parent, you know your children very well, don't you? And there's small little changes in their sort of um, appearance or behaviour. Any little change is worth exploring and looking into. Um, when we deliver our training, we always say that we believe that suicides can be preventable. And we know that people will display that they are struggling with suicidal thoughts in many different ways. That could be in the words that they're saying, in their behavioural changes. And it's just looking out for those words um, all those behaviours that you see that are different and exploring them and asking um, and speaking to that young person and just noticing what you've noticed and seeing what you, seeing how they respond back to you. But we also know that we feel afraid in asking the question around suicide. Um, but we know that if you ask the question around suicide and you ask it clearly and directly in a safe way, that you're actually giving that person an opportunity to 
talk about suicide and then they know that it's okay to talk about suicide but we know often people don't feel like they've got the skills to do that or the confidence to do that and our website is a brilliant resource to use for that because we have a section on conversation starters so if you are finding it difficult to have that conversation with somebody and you might be concerned that they're having suicidal thoughts and obviously you can give us a call but you can also get some information off our website regarding on how to have those difficult on suicide too so it's definitely a really really good resource or a toolkit to just to go into and just have a look for some more information um and in terms of sort of schools and there's also a parent guide as well so that's great for any parent that might be concerned um or anyone that's working with young people as well because on there it shows you how to have those conversations with young people too we've also got um really brilliant campaigns that we've done at the moment called bedtime stories and we've used a few celebrities on that so there are latest campaigns that you can visit our website and there's a YouTube link that you can actually access that too as well. We also do a colleges, um, schools and colleges guide that every college and school in sort of, um, England has access to that as well. We have sent them out and we also do a university guide as well for universities as well around suicide. Um, the other thing that we do is we equip our community. So we go out and we deliver training um, just to build suicide safe communities to that we all have skills to support people who might be struggling with suicidal thoughts so we do different training packages and they're available on our website too so if that's something that you guys as an individual or organization might be interested in as well you can also access the website for more information regarding that as well well i know, um, I know I for have... the lions boxing club will definitely definitely be up for anything yeah. like that no, that'd be great. I mean, um, we do have um, some funded training as well, which is specifically for the black country. So that's something that I can maybe speak to you um, if you're interested in as well. You can just, our, our details are on the website as well for West Midlands. So if that's something that you guys or anyone else that's listening might be interested in, then I can give you some further information regarding that too. And, you know, if someone wanted to get into like working for Pyrus and working on... Um maybe the hotlines, how would they go about getting in touch and doing their part? Yeah, so um, we're a national charity, um, but we also have regional offices. So I'm based in the West Midlands Regional Office. Um, we do have a lot of people that want volunteer for us as well. So if anyone's interested in volunteering for us as well, we do have, we do take on volunteers. Um, so if that's something that you guys might be interested in, then you can please get in touch with us our details are on the website and all our vacancies um, are advertised on the website as well so if you're interested in working for us then just um, keep an eye out on our website because everything's normally posted on that so yeah I think we've got uh, um, a few vacancies but I think it might be in the northwest so just keep an eye on our website um, it's always updated with local new vacancies and posts so I think at the moment when people have been furloughed and out of work and I've, I know there's so many kind hearted souls out there who want something to do. And if you want something to do, how better than to spend your time saving people's lives and really giving back to humanity? Definitely. We really value our volunteers. You know, they work extremely hard to go out in our communities to make our community suicide safer. And they do that at their own times. So, you know, it's it's really nice when we see that people are passionate want to make our community suicide safe and give up that time to do that so it's always lovely to see that well, Lee, is there anything you'd like to say to Bali before um i'd just like to go back a bit to to talking about suicide and and um i think we've got to remember that if someone is talking to you regarding they're, they're, they're feeling like they're going to commit suicide it's it's not your job to to save them it's your job at that point just to point them in the right direction so you don't, you know, you don't need to be qualified for that. Just you just have to have a bit of knowledge of where, where to to point them really. Yeah. Um, so I'm, it's, I'm just trying to get across. You don't need to panic really that someone is talking to you about it. Just 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 point them in the right direction. Definitely, we are so fortunate that we live in a community where we have so many good organisations and resources around us that it doesn't matter, you know, if you don't have the answers, that's okay. To, you know, we know that there, we have the Samaritans, there's there's Papyrus, there's loads of other organisations out there that you can signpost that individual to. So you don't feel like it's on you because you can always get access to the support. Yeah, definitely. 
Well, Bali, we're going to, unless there's anything else you'd like to say. Um, I just have a few apps I wouldn't mind sharing with you guys, if that's okay. Just if anyone's listening okay. today and they want to know um, about other organisations that they can access support, is that okay if you've got a couple of minutes? Of course, of course and we'll, we'll put these in our show notes okay. as well and everything yeah. for you. Okay, that's great. So um, we know that, especially with young people, sometimes um, we find that the apps are really good, like they can download them on the phone. So I just wanted to share a few. We've got the Stay Alive app, which is a free suicide prevention app that helps its users stay safe from acting on thoughts of suicide. Um, so that's self-help. Um, and we've got self-help, which is an anxiety management. So this app is helpful for helping users manage their anxiety. And then we've got Mood Meter, this is an NHS app which allows the user to track and understand influences behind their mood. And then there's also grief support for young people. This app was created by Child Bereavement UK and Bereaved Young People. It targets young people aged between 11 and 25 who have been bereaved and are in need of support. And we also have Calm app, um, Calm, sorry, Calm Harm. This is an app that can be used to manage urges to self-harm. And it's a private app, um, password protected. So those are a few apps that our young people are using at the moment and find it quite useful. So just wanted to share those with you guys too today. And obviously we've got ourselves, Papyrus. So we are a confidential support and advice service for young for children and young people under the age of 35 who are experiencing thoughts of suicide or anyone concerned of a young person can also call us too. Um, and we've shared that number with you guys at the bottom. And we also have a text message service as well. So please, please, if you're going to do anything tonight and, you, you know, you've listened to this podcast, just raise awareness. If you're having a chat with a family member or um, speaking to somebody, just let them know about Papyrus, just spread the word because potentially it could save someone's life. And before we finish, Bally, have you got any sayings or quotes if they've got you through hard times or something that Papyrus says? Sorry, what was that? Sorry, Kerry, didn't hear you. Have you got any sayings or quotes that have helped you get through your life or any sayings that Papyrus says to help people get through it? Um, yeah, so Papyrus, we say that no one should struggle with suicidal thoughts on their own. Um, we are here to support you. So if you feel like you are struggling with suicidal thoughts, we just want to let you know that you're not on your own. Please just pick up the phone and get support that you need. And if you are concerned about somebody, if it's a friend or a family member and you're concerned about that person, there is support services out there. And don't feel like you've got to do it all on your own. Just get support, or just get some advice. Um, and if it's not Papyrus, there are other organisations out there that can support as well. And Samaritans is brilliant in the sense that it's 24 hours. So if you just want someone to talk to, then please call um, Samaritans. Um, we are open, Papyrus is open from 9am to midnight. So and seven days a week and we also we offer that text message service and email service too so just reach out to somebody just get the support that you need and if it means just speaking to a friend or a family member then please please do that please don't struggle on your own well thank you bali for coming on now That's on nice. tuesday we're moving, we're moving our time to a slightly later time of half seven um on tuesday evening where we're going to be joined by sky stewart that's going to be telling us all about her life from uh, transition, transition, transitioning. I can't say the word. Transition. Can you say it? <laughs> transitioning. Uh, from a man to a woman and through all of her journey. Now, I've met Sky and it's a remarkable woman. Uh, so join us half past seven on Tuesday. So until we all see each other next time, take care of yourselves and each other. ta -ra -ra bit. Listen, listen, listen. And that's a wrap for another show. But if there are any comments or messages that you would like us to read out for our next podcast, please be in touch. There are also lots of different organisations at the bottom of this page and hopefully they can help you or someone you care about. Please share this to spread the word. Until we talk next time, ta a bit. Listen, listen, listen.